In this video, we'll look at a couple of examples to practice calculating standard deviation of normally distributed data. Example A says, a company wants to test its exterior house paint to determine how long it will retain its original color before fading. The company mixes two brands of paint by adding different chemicals to each brand. Six one gallon cans are made for each paint brand and the results are recorded for every gallon of each brand of paint. The following are the results obtained in the laboratory. And what we can see is we have this table that says results for brand A and results for brand B. All right, then calculate the standard deviation for each brand of paint, which brand has var more variable data. These are both small populations. So the fact that it says that these are populations means that we can use the population version of the formula for standard deviation as opposed to the sample formula. All right, so to calculate standard deviation, we need to know three things. We need to know all the values for x, which is our values of data, and we have that right here in this table. These would be all the x values for brand A and brand B. We also need to know mu, which is the mean or the average for brand A and for brand B. Finally, we need to know n, which is the number of data points we have. And we can see here, there are six for brand A and six for brand B. So n will be six for each brand. So let's calculate the average mean mu for brand A and brand B, because we will need to know that. So to calculate the mean, we're going to take the sum of all of our different data values and divide by six because we have six values. So add up 15, 65, 55, and so on, and you get 240. Then divide by six because we have six values and you get that our mean is 40. Now we're gonna do the same thing for brand B. Add up all six values. Again, you get a result of 240, which means that, again, the mean is 40. Now, in order to calculate the standard deviation, we have to go through a somewhat time-consuming process because we have to figure out how far away are all of our data values from the mean and then square each of those values, sum them up, divide by n, and take the square root. So it's a multi-step process for sure. So it sometimes can help to set up a table to keep track of all of the differences from between the x values and the mean and what those are squared. So that's what I have set up below. We have a new table for brand A and brand B, and I already filled in the x values that we had above. So now we just need to figure out the difference between each x value and the mean. And remember that the mean for each brand was 40. And then we'll square each of those. And then we can continue with the formula. So to figure out the difference between each x value and the mean, we just take the x value and subtract 40. So 15 minus 40, 65 minus 40, and so on. And fill those into the table. Now that we have each of those distance differences, we're going to square each of those values and fill that in in the last column of each table. So that would mean we have to figure out what's negative 25 squared, 25 squared, 15 squared, and so on. Keep in mind that these numbers should always be positive because any number squared will be positive. So you shouldn't have any negatives there. Okay, now that we have all of our squared values, let's remind ourselves what the formula actually is for standard deviation. So this is the symbol for standard deviation. It's a Greek letter that's called sigma. And standard deviation is the square root of a big calculation. We will have to sum up all of our squared x minus mu values. So that's the sum of everything in this last column for each brand and then divide that by n, and then take the square root of everything. So the next thing that we should do is find the sum for each of these last columns, then we'll divide that by six, and then take the square root. So the sum for all of 
the x minus mu squared values for brand A. If you add up 625, 625, 225, 25, 25, 225, you get 1750. And the sum for brand B is 250. So now we can continue to find the standard deviation. We're going to take that sum, so we have this so far, divide by n, which was 6, because there are 6 different data values, and then take the square root. So the standard deviation for brand A will be 1750 divided by 6, and then square root of that. And we get approximately 17.1. For brand B, we take 250 divided by 6 and then take the square root of that. And we get approximately 6.5. So those are our standard deviations. So what this means is for brand A, 68% of the data is within 17.1% months of the mean of 40 months. So that's pretty spread out. Whereas for brand B, 68% of the data was within 6.5 months of the mean of 40 months. So the original question asked which brand had more variable data, and that's definitely brand A because the standard deviation is much bigger than for brand B. And remember that that's what standard deviation tells you. It tells you how spread out is the data. So a larger number for standard deviation means that the numbers, the x values that we had originally, were much more spread out for brand A or varied than for brand B, which you can see for brand B, the numbers are all pretty close to 40. And for brand A, they're just more spread out from 40.